how do we connect this into this so we can plug it into the wall and use our new camera. This is what I'm gonna show you how to do today. Before you wanna get started making any adapters, check the unit, make sure that the voltage and the amperage rating are gonna be in range of your transformer power supply. Like this one here is five volts, two amps. That's more than enough. This one only takes about 0.6 or 600 milliamps, which is one sixth of one amp. So this is totally overkill for what we need to do here. Next step is we're going to take our AC plug going to cut this. I'm going to do the same thing on the USB plug that came with this camera. I'm going to convert this into this for free without buying anything. When you snip your wire, make sure you leave yourself some slack in case you have to go back and do something the second time and you don't get it right the first time. Because I'm going to imagine you're a do-it-yourself or you're not a professional at this kind of thing like some people. If you have the proper tool for the job, you might want to find the right gauge size wire strippers. Otherwise, you're going to have to kind of grab it. You just want to squeeze down just enough so you grab the insulation and you pull that forward you don't want to cut and you don't want to get into the shielding which is going to be the ground for or the right conductor in there which is going to carry the voltage again real gentle you need to strip back about an inch at least that's the way i do it so this is fully exposed and you have about an inch of the center conductor if you do have the equipment, I would definitely recommend using a, a multimeter and measuring out the DC from this conductor to this one here. This is going to be your positive conductor. This could be a negative conductor. And you basically want to see something between 4.9 and 6 volts because this is a 5 volt transformer. They're typically not exactly dead on 5, but you're going to want to be within that range of 10% tolerance, which is typical in DC electronics. Next, you're going to want to grab your USB cable, which is from your accessory. In my case, I'm using this camera. And why they go with these USB cables is beyond me. I'll never understand. I mean, nobody has USBs in their roof or in the ceiling or wherever people put these cameras outside. It's ridiculous. I don't know what the hell these Chinese people are thinking about half the time. So again, you want to just kind of just grab that insulation and pull it back. Now in this case, we got two wires and we got lucky. Here's why I'm saying I got lucky in this case. You can see red and black over here, red and black. Now in this scenario, I know that this is color to color, but if you have four wires in here, which is what a typical USB would have, which you have five volts DC, five volts negative, and then you'd have white and green or white and blue. Some of the colors in there can vary. Those are the RX and TX wires, which means receive and transmit because a USB is a data communicating cable. But if you have those two, just omit that. And you just go red to red, black to black. That's typically the way it should work. The other two wires, you're gonna wanna just insulate and cut them off. You're not gonna use those. It's not gonna be needed for your work today as far as making your connections most people are just going to use electrical tape which is fine as long as you make solid connections and you're not messy no one likes a messy job so i'm sliding my sleeve down here and i'm actually going to switch that slide that down here and i'm going to twist these up color to color I'm going to put a drop of solder, but if you don't have solder, that's okay. You could just use the electrical tape. Then it's going to pull the heat shrink up, heat it up. Then I can go mount my camera. And here's what my wiring looks like before I go ahead and make my solder. As an aside note, if you're going to have any possibility of any stress being on your wiring, I would definitely suggest making a loop like this. Just taking a wire tie or whatever you have, preferably a wire tie, they seem to work really good for this job. And it takes the pressure off, so in case there was ever a pull on the wire, it's going to take the stress off of the wire and put it all on the tie, which is a really good practice. Because after you go through this work, you don't want to have to come back and fix it. That's the worst. As it is, they screw you by making these weird plugs to begin with, right? Who needs that? And lastly, I'm going to plug it in. There's all my wiring. I'm going to go mount it back up there where the old one used to be and test it out. There it goes. It's working. Sweet. I hope this was helpful to y'all. If it was helpful, give it a like, you know? And if it wasn't helpful, heck, give it a like anyway. <laughs>